we are learning new information about the gruesome beheading of a woman near Minneapolis this week and why the alleged killer was free to walk the streets in the first place. Today, police charging Alexis Sabaret with second-degree intentional murder for his role in the death of America Thayer. Local reports suggest Sabaret was released on bond this spring after allegedly trying to burn down his apartment in 2020, just three years after he was convicted of domestic assault charges in 2017. Here now, Vince Colonnais, radio host and editorial director of The Daily Caller, a very busy man. Great story at The Daily Caller covering this. It's important. These are the things that Americans need to know about what's transpiring in great American cities. Give us a picture about why this is even possible right now, Vince. Yeah, when we often, when we talk about crime, you know, a lot of focus is, of course, placed on the police, but it's not just the police in our criminal justice system that needs to work. It's the prosecutors and it's the courts as well. And this beheading this week is going to place a lot of focus on the court that released this guy. Uh, ultimately, he's got a couple of convictions in his past, one of them for domestic abuse. The, the initials match up with America Thayer here, the idea being that he probably domestically abused her in 2017 mm -hmm. uh, before he subsequently now murdered her. And as you mentioned, he apparently tried to set fire to his own apartment last year. And that led to a court hearing this spring where a court doctor recommended that he be taken into custody and held there because he is a threat to the community. The judge released him. And now this is the result. Would you say, I mean, it seems to be clear that the rhetoric that is coming out of Washington, out of certain politicians, the defund the police movement, this rejection of justice and repercussions and responsibility, that this is what is driving this. Would you agree with that? A consequence-free world is a world in which criminals thrive, and that is what we've created. I look to here in D.C., Naya Courtney, six years old, killed two Fridays ago now mm -hmm. uh, on the streets of D.C., gunned down in the middle of the night. The person who killed her uh, already was uh, in trouble in Maryland this past year for an illegal weapons charge wow. and grand theft auto. Uh, this is this is typical. These are criminals who get released back into the public and then go up, go on to commit heinous acts of violence. You know, and people think it, it, some people are being told or believe this is just some natural progression of evil America. This is the result of policy. As well, it's a result of rhetoric when they can't. They're, oh, we're not going to defund the police. The rhetoric has made it impossible for the police to do their job. So the police resign, or they move on to some other career, or or they quit, whatever they do. But this is the end result of the democratic mindset. It, it's an extraordinary development, and it's affecting every city, not just blue cities at this point. And it's the product of Democrats who don't feel that they need to actually change the laws in order to change what the laws are. You're yes. looking at district attorneys, state's attorneys, Commonwealth's attorneys across the country who are being put into place by wealthy liberal donors like George Soros has definitely done this. Right. He's bankrolled these types of campaigns in order to get these guys to not prosecute crimes. It's a big deal. Yeah, this is this is a, an agenda. It is planned. It's a strategy and, it, and it's uh, paid for. Uh, Vince, great. Thank you very much for being